Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome to Returning Home. I'm your host, Natalie Sapinski, speaking to you live from my home in Susia in the beautiful Hebron Hills. Um, today is the last day before we begin really getting down to Pesach. And um, most of us over here are deep in elbow grease. I've been cleaning my kitchen and oven cleaner. The smell of oven cleaner is overpowering. And, you know, it's... Uh, Kind of satisfying, cleaning away all that dirt, all that grime, and starting new, getting down to just basic, you know, and, and doing basic house cleaning. It's kind of nice to put the phone down and disconnect from um, the world a little bit. It's been, a, it's been a tough, busy, very emotional time here in Israel. We had elections just two days ago, and it doesn't look like anything really came out of that Um People are already talking about a fifth election, and it doesn't look like much will change. And change is good. Change is healthy, and everybody needs change. Um, I had people who write in to the show telling me how hard it is to move to Israel and how they've always wanted to move to Israel, but they have this that is keeping them back, and that is keeping them back, and they can't do it because of this, and they can't do it because of that. And... I've had people even say, Natalie, you tell us to just come, but we can't all just come. But really, you can. And if you set your mind to anything, you can do it. And you can't overthink it. And you can't look at the obstacles. I mean, I know it's not a very good comparison, but I'm a terrible, terrible house cleaner. Okay? I mean, I waited to the last possible minute to clean my kitchen. But I did it. Okay, and I put everything aside. I put my phone away, and I just did it. And if you want to come to Israel, just do it. Pack up your stuff, call Nefesh Benefesh, fill out the papers, and just come. And one foot in front of the other. Make your arrangements. Don't plan ahead. Don't worry so much. Don't don't look at crossing every T and dotting every I. You know, sometimes you have to have a leap of faith. You take that leap. You get here. And then you figure it out as you go along. And once you get here, it's a lot easier because you're here already. You're already here. Just like once I got in that kitchen and got the gloves on and got the buckets full of water and got my head in the oven, I started scrubbing. We'll be right back. Stick with us. Bye-bye. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome back to Returning Home. I'm your host, Natalie Sapinski. Joining us today is an Ole who has been here for, I think, two and a half years. His name is Jeff Dahan. He is from Connecticut. He moved to Renana with his family, um, four children between the ages of three and 13. Now, all of you out there who say you can't come with teenagers, you've got to come when the kids are small. Not true. Not true. You know, we've interviewed several people in Jeff's situation, who've come with a family and the kids are a little bit older and they make it work. Jeff, as one of those people, he's made it work. Jeff, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Okay. Why don't you tell us how you ended up here? Um, I understand you were not raised in the yeshiva world. You're not a religious guy. What happened? Uh, so basically, you know, it's something that my wife and I always had in the back of our mind uh, ever since our uh, first child was born. Um, but then, you know, I think like a lot of people, um, life happens, uh, you know, the career is growing, the family's growing. Um, and, you know, you, you just kind of 
don't always focus on the long term in, in those busy phases of life. Uh, but ultimately, after four kids, we came here uh, to Israel for my oldest daughter's bar mitzvah trip. We left all but two little ones at home, and it was a it was a pretty eye opening experience. It was the longest time my wife and I got to spend without uh, you know uh, diapers and the busyness of little kids. We were here for about two weeks. And, you know, we, we saw our kids here. We saw the country. We visited um, some relatives here. Uh, and, you know, ironically, as we were driving um, up and down uh, the West Coast, my wife pointed out a few times, hey, look, those are some of the high-tech companies that you've either worked with or for over the years. And mm-hmm. I, we kind of joked, like, hey, maybe we should move here. Um, <laughs> you know, fast, <laughs> fast forward, you know, a few uh a few more months, and, you know, that, that feeling never really went away. And, uh, you know, it got to the point where my daughter um, started applying to, you know, different programs to be able to move to Israel with or without us and to do high school here. Really? So, uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. so she was she was very motivated. And then, you know, at the same time, once we decided, you know what, let's, let's, all, let's all try to make this work, then sort of the practical aspects uh, came into play. And, you know, I, I hit the pavement with LinkedIn. I had zero connection, zero professional knowledge of, of Israel or anyone working there. And you know, after a few months of, you know, doing phone interview or, you know, Skype interviews at five in the morning from the basement before the regular workday in the States, um, I was able to finally connect with, uh, you know, someone who, was willing to accept my crazy LinkedIn message from a guy in Connecticut that wants to move to Israel, but I need a job first. <laughs> and and what and, happened? I mean, it's so, unusual yeah, to so, be hot, you know. So, you know, um, I think I had to be a little more aggressive. And, uh, you know, so I, I, kept, I kept sending him messages. And finally, he looked at my resume and he said, wow, uh, yeah, let's, let's talk. We had some interviews. And... I came out here for my final interviews in the fact-finding mission. So I did my final interview. Um, I spent time looking around Renana. My wife knew that Renana was sort of the one of the, you know, better options for a smooth landing if you're coming with kids, to have old pond in the school, et cetera. And by the time I landed uh, back at um, JFK, there was a message waiting for me that I had a job offer. And it was, you know, 5 in the morning, roughly, in the States, so I already did all of sort of the HR conversation about salary and benefits and all that stuff. And then finally I called my wife and, uh, you know, she woke up and I said, guess what? I have a job offer. And at that point it's like, wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, we, tell me how long, you know, generally they don't hold a position for very long. What, what happened? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So I think uh, it was around March. And, you know, within one month, um, I moved here uh, by myself. Mm. And because the kids had to finish up school, my wife had to sell the house, sell uh-huh. the stuff. Look at this. Pretty much. This, 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 uh, this is very smart, what you did. Very interesting. Very smart. And you're the first person who's been on the show who told me you've done this. Everyone listening, um, you're always trying to do it together, together, together. But you don't have to do everything together. Awesome. Jeff? Very good. Very smart, what you did. Very smart. I am so impressed. I am really impressed by you and your wife, because not every woman is going to be comfortable doing that, you know, selling the house and and doing all the heavy lifting. Well, my my wife is certainly, uh, I want to say she's the stronger one of the two of us. Um, Her name is Dorit. She's she's always been extremely strong, um, independent, confident. And, you know, when she sets her mind to, to something, it, it, she makes it happen, and so she had no problem. I mean, it, it's not that it was easy, but basically, she's like, "Look, we want to do this." Um, she has the four kids to take care of. She had to, you know, pretty much unload everything from the house, go to. I know, you know what she had to do because I we did it. Everyone who moved to Israel did what yeah. she did. Um, yeah, it's exactly. a big, it's a big job. It's it's a move. Look, a move everywhere is hard. A move from New York city probably to the five towns is hard so yeah. every move is hard especially when you have five four kids because you already have a life it's hard yeah. um moving to a different country is just that much harder and call it for her and for both of you for for making it happen the way you did 
and nothing held you back. Um, that's, that's what people need to hear. Every obstacle that comes up, just knock it down and keep going. Because there's going to be obstacles, you know, all along our lives. Good for you. I'm, I'm very, very, uh, very impressed. I did not know that part of your story. You didn't tell me that when we spoke the first time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so so let's so you land. So you land first, and then every so you have to, I guess, set up your own little single guy life for a little while, which is probably easy. And then then Irid came with the kids, right? Yes. So in in August, um, Dorit uh, made Alia with the kids, and it was uh, you know a beautiful thing. It was a chartered flight. We saw the plane land. They unloaded. I think it was a Terminal One and big ceremony pre COVID, of course. And it was incredible. And, you know, uh, we had some of our uh, dear friends that had been helping me while I was here to just get situated. Uh, and they, they were there with us at, you know, five in the morning, six in the morning. And it was a really, it was a really special, it was a very special time uh, to, you sure. know, begin this new chapter here. Right. Okay. So tell us about that a little bit. What, what was it like? Your children, I, I have written down here in my notes that they're between the ages of three and 13, but that's... That was then, that was then, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you had some little ones and you had some big ones. You had to get them in school. You had to get, get them up and running. Tell me how that went for you. So it, it, it definitely, you know, took a lot of planning. Um, we, you know, we found the right schools. And when I say we, I mean uh, my, my wife. And, you know, she, she, she speaks, a, she's basically fluent in Hebrew at this point, but she knew a tremendous amount coming here. So she was kind of our anchor to, you know, handle all of the logistics around getting them enrolled in school, um, ensuring that we had, you know, extra tutoring for them above and beyond the old pond and the schools. And, you know, it, it was, it was certainly a challenge, but I, I want to say that we were talking about this for months when we were back in the States and the kids were already on board and excited. Um, they're, they're, you know, I, I can't really recall any memories when any of us were thinking that, Oh, what did we do? Why did we do this? It's, it's just mm-hmm. been really, you know, uh, it, it's amazing because we really all came together for it. And, you know, with a, you have to with, with yeah. something like this. Uh, but, sure, no, sure. I mean, at this point, yeah. they're they're all bilingual. Um, the, the children, they're, you know, they're excelling in school. Um, you know, they have their, their friends. Of course, you know, we still have very close connections to people back in the States, thanks to technology. Um, but overall, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy for them, and I'm super excited for their future here. Yeah, that's so. That's a that's a great attitude you have. You're not telling us the real thing, but really, what you did was you made it a family adventure, and, and when you do it yeah. like that, it works because everyone's in it together. You're pulling for each other. Um, you're a team, and it's exciting. And and you did it at a great time. I I love this story. I love it when people come and they kind of overcome the odds. I I I just you know so many people even still today they say come when your kids are young, come when your kids are young, but not everybody can for whatever reason. And it can still work when your kids are teens. It can still work because happy mommy, happy baby, right? And, yeah. Um, you guys are the leaders. And even though Israel is for children, and uh, it is true that, that um, the kids, like you just told me yourself, your daughter was looking at programs, and, and then you guys made the decision. You're still the parents. You're still lead. They still look up to you. And your attitude is... is the magic sauce, you know, um, as soon as you make your decision to do it, you just do it and you make it work and you did a great, you, you split, you actually split, you, you know, you did kind of a split Ali a little bit and it works. Yeah. It sounds like it works. That's, um, very good. Very good advice. Um, everyone out there listening, if you have any questions for Jeff, you can write to me at Natalie at Israel news talk radio.com. And I'll forward the message to Jeff. Um, I actually found Jeff in a very interesting way. He works for Microsoft here in Israel. And when he told us a story that he was driving up and down, I guess it was Kavishe route six. He saw all the high tech companies and Israel today is a high tech, you know, powerhouse. There is a ton of work here. There are a ton of startups here. There are go on LinkedIn. Okay. Everyone listening, go on LinkedIn and you'll see these companies. There's tons of them, tons of them you've never heard of and they all are looking for talent and um you know jeff is is it really worked out and uh you know i'm sure even today if, even more so you can get a job before coming to israel because everybody now is working from home remote work is normal right yeah certainly and you know i mean one thing uh, actually there's, there's two things i definitely want to mention um Very quickly, we've had... we're almost out of time. 
Okay, we've had amazing, amazing, amazing support from um, you know our our, our dear family, Dorit's parents. Uh, they've been here as often as possible. Dorit's actually there right now in the states with them, listening to this, and you know their their support really helped us make this move, and their continued support, you know, certainly helps keep us sane. And it's always nice when they help uh, out with the uh, the food deliveries in COVID. So Jeff, we have, to, we have to say, we have to end, we have to end the session. Uh, Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay, you take care too. Everyone, stick around. We'll be right back after these messages. The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar, she's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. Shalom. I'm Leah Haroni. Join me on my show, News from the Torah. Each Sunday, we'll use the weekly Torah portion as a prism for understanding the news today. Listen to news from the Torah to gain clarity about the times we're living in and to understand your own spiritual path in the process. News from the Torah every Sunday on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome back to Returning Home. I'm your host, Natalie Sapinski. That was amazing talking to Jeff about his story. I love stories like that. Just all good, all positive. We have another one now with Aliza Bracha Ben Shalom, who arrived to Israel, I think, three weeks ago with her family, a bunch of kids, I think four kids, five kids, same thing, same story, all positive, family adventure. Um, and she has had quite an adventure. I've been following her, and um, she has had some 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 difficulties and she's getting through them day by day. Aliza, are you with us? I'm with you. Oh good. I want you to tell us all about your your uh your <laughs> your crises. The the things <laughs> you've been going through and how you've overcome everything. It's just amazing. Your attitude is is amazing. Okay, so our latest adventures. We went from our temporary house that friends loaned us while we were waiting for our lift to arrive. And um, we were transitioning to our new house. But just before we left, so that we shouldn't get, you know, too comfortable or think that things are too easy, the, there was like a water leak in the whole building that we were staying in. And so they shut off the water. So okay. <laughs> when I say shut off the water, I mean, you know, no, it was on election day in Israel. And so nobody works. So there's nobody to come out and repair it. And it was like no sink water, no drinking water, no flushing toilets. No right. Nothing. Now, let me ask you, did they, did they warn you of this? So we saw this leak, and then I think my husband spoke to some of the people, and they said, okay, we're leaving the water on for, you know, another 15 minutes, and then we're going to shut it off. And now uh-huh. that, was, that was a good heads up, but I, I yes. didn't know yes. the that meant find every bucket and large container and pot and pan and everything to fill so that you yeah, could use that's it, what it means. to... Yes, yeah, so I, yeah, I I didn't know that. We're not Israel. Well, we're Israeli now, no. but okay, that's know. what it means. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what it means. And normally they said the water comes on within a few hours, but it because mm-hmm. of election day, it didn't come on until after we left the following day. So they actually were very wonderful. They turned it on for us. They're like, okay, we're going to give you 15 minutes from now because you didn't know about that, and they turned it back mm-hmm. on for us. We filled pots and pans. I filled the bathtub. Right. I was like, at least right. I could grab right. water from right. there. <laughs> right. That's what you got to do. That's right. Bottles, okay, bottles, so, bottles and pots. Yes. Yeah, so it worked. Ugh. So that was the first adventure. And then we left our... Well, okay, you're, you're skipping a whole adventure. So I, I haven't, okay, we okay. haven't spoken to you for two weeks. The last time we spoke, I believe you were in your COVID hotel. Okay. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. Yeah. So you, you, I know you were planning to move to Pardis Khanna. And because you had a friend there, and I love how you tell me all your criteria to live in somewhere was just you needed one friend. So you found one friend. You had one friend in Paris Chana. That's where you're going to live. You had you had found a house before you moved to Israel, I believe. Correct? Yes. Okay. And so tell us. Yeah. Yeah. So that house 
um, was not the shared for us. That was not our soulmate house. Um, it was. So what does that mean? Tell, tell us what happened. Yeah, it, it was left in some pretty rough condition, and the tracim, which are like the shades Curtains, and blinds, but like the heavy, yeah. yeah, but they're like the heavy duty metal ones. Yeah, those were broken yeah. and down. You couldn't operate them. The house, the house was in pretty bad disrepair. And we just, we walked in and we had like a little bit of shock when we were like, yay, we're, we're going to check out our home before we move in. Let's right. go see it. We walk right. in the front yard. We're like, oh, it's so cute. It's so wonderful. We open the door, the door you could hardly open because it was kind of swollen and scraping against the bottom. You had to like really give it a yeah. good, you know, oomph to open it. We come in and we just had shock. And I, I, I don't know, I guess for me, when I went into shock, I... I just was looking and I wasn't speaking. I was just, I was in my head. I was trying to figure out what we're going to do. The other piece of it, um, because really, you know, you could clean a house, you can hire cleaners and for a little bit of money, you you know, you could put it back into shape. You could hopefully ask the landlord to fix the, you know, those shutters, let them put them up and, you know, like you could do that. But when we looked around the space and the size and everything that we, you know, we, we had a general idea of, of the size, but, it wasn't really realistic for there's seven of us, including all of the kids. And, and we also have a puppy. So it wasn't really a realistic space. And I work from home and my husband works from home. So we needed like, okay, so what, this space. Yeah, so, we needed a so how does, space. And, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No. And we also have lots and lots of guests. So we brought 14 mattresses with us because we plan to have mat- double mattresses, Every place that we had a mattress, we were going to have double so that you could always pull one off and have a friend come stay over so that we could mm-hmm. have a whole family or anything that we needed. And this, it wasn't only going to not fit friends, it wasn't even going to fit really all of our stuff and everything that we brought in order to, you know, live according to what we wanted to, the standards and the comfort of what we wanted. Okay. So, okay. I, I just, I have to ask you, and I know everyone listening is going to think this also, but how, how did this happen? Um, so we needed a place, and we looked online, we asked around, and we were told there's nothing in the area that's available for rent. Like, that it's, it's not the, you know, oh, rentals happen over the summer, you're moving in the winter, and there's nothing available. So we kept asking around, and we got, you know, through word of mouth, a place that somebody was going to vacate in the middle of the winter, and by me it almost didn't matter what we got because I needed a okay. place that we could put, like, where are you moving? Oh, you're moving to Party Toscana. What's your address? I had right. to be moving. Right. I had to give everybody you needed something. I get it. I needed yeah. something. And I figured also, like, okay, the landlord also only gave us a six-month rental. I'm like, okay, so it'll be temporary. We'll have to find something once right. we get there. We Corona, we couldn't okay. do a pilot okay. trip. You know, I'm like being realistic with, okay. these, you know, expectations. <laughs> Right, right. So, so my uh, my husband said, "Look, we'll hire cleaners. We'll spend a lot of money. We'll get the place into shape." And I, we started to talk, and I said, "But we're not going to fit. Like, we're not. I can't have an office at home. There's no space to work. Then I'm going to have to pay to rent an office. Like, what are we going to do? This, this isn't going to work." And a friend of ours was with us, and she said, "Would well, you want to go look at another place?" I said, "I heard there are no places available. You know what?" She said, "Call the local realtor." So there's this local wonderful realtor. Her name is Naomi Tove. I think there's, you know, one realtor in all of Pardesana, and this is her. And Naomi Tove took us. She said, look, there's, there." Ha-, she said, what's your budget? I said, my budget mm-hmm. is a four-bedroom house. I don't, I, I don't have a budget <laughs> right. because I have to have a house. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. Order. Just show me what you got. Right. I right. Show me what you got. I need a minimum of four bedrooms because they have to convert to offices and other spaces and, and extra little side places and whatever. So she showed us two places. Uh, both of the, One of them was brand new. The other one was like one-year-old new construction. Okay, you don't need to, okay, so um, let me just, you don't, you don't need to get into all the details, but I, I, this is a very good example of things that happen and that can happen. And yeah. when I, I, I want to just use you and use your story as an example to all those people out there who, who try to make every little plan and, you know, make everything perfect. It's, it's sometimes not perfect, okay? And life isn't perfect. And things happen. 
you know, events happen that you cannot yeah. plan for. And you have to roll with it. And you, Aliza, you know how to roll with it. So, Yala, go on. You have to, you have, yeah, you have to pivot. And at first, I kind of had negative feelings about the experience. And I said, you know what? Wait a minute. If I didn't have this first house, we wouldn't have even gotten to Israel. Because my husband would have said, you didn't find a place for us to live. I'm not putting stuff on a container and shipping it. So we're not going. And we wouldn't have even been here. So I decided to nickname the first house our blessing house because it was a tremendous blessing that we had an address that we had a place to yes, land yes and that, yes. We did, and that we had a plan because it made us feel better to have, have a plan yes and then we could come and that's what got us on a plane i don't i, I highly doubt i don't think he my husband would have gotten on a plane without having a plan and having a place to go I don't, I don't think that would have made sense. And I don't think, I don't think it, would, okay. it would make sense to anybody. It wouldn't make sense to anybody with five kids and a dog. No, and you're not going to leave your stuff. What are you going to do? Leave it, ship it later, import it? No, no. You had a plan. You you didn't have a plan. You had a plan. You had a plan. Things happen when you plan. Sometimes. And then you have to pivot. You, know, you have or, to pivot. Yeah, you just you, you deal well, with it. I mean, you have to. Or you deal. Right. So I really. I, I had it out with Hashem. Hashem and I had a really long talk. And I said, listen, if that's my house, then that's my house. But I, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't think it can work there. And I want something else. I need something. I need the right space for us. And, and it really looked like this new place that we got wasn't going to work um, at one point. And, and I, I, I broke down. I had my moment. And I cried, and I poured my heart out, and I said, you know, basically, God, if it's your will that I should be in this first place, and that's where you want us, I'm going to go. But I, I would rather a different option. And if there's any way to make that happen, please, please help to make that happen. And if not, then with a smile, I'm going to go to the other place, and that's just going to be what it's going to be. So what happened? I, and where are you now? So we are now in the new house. That's the fast-forward zoom in. But we, we looked at two houses, we chose one of the two, but then it, it was another rocky road to actually getting the house, uh, and it wasn't so smooth, but it did end up working out, and our lift arrived yesterday. So everything just piled into this house, and we looked around, and we went, wow, if we had gone to the Blessing House, to that first house, we would have had to make a lot of things disappear. We couldn't have done what we wanted to do, but this house that we have now is really exactly what we needed. Well, that's so good. We, that's really nice. Yeah, that's we, really, we got into it really is a, it, it's a bracha, and I don't think you realize how much of one. Um, we're going to take a break. We're going to be back in, in, a, in a few minutes, but you know, not everybody has the foresight to even bring a lift. We didn't bring one. And I mean, you you now have all these things that you can never get here, and that's a blessing that you did that. You really organized. Um, you know, don't worry about it fitting or not fitting. You have stuff that you probably will never be able to get here, right? Right, right. I mean, right. it's it's pretty it's pretty nice. Um, I, I I would not worry. I would not worry about fitting. Stick around. Stay with us, please, Elisa. If you can give us um, if you can continue, that would be great. We're going to be back after these messages. In a time where feelings have become fact, where rational thought and common sense has disappeared, one man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. Political Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American Time, 7 a.m. Israeli Time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. Welcome back to Returning Home. I'm your host, Natalie Sapinski. We are continuing our talk with Aliza 
Raja, who has just told us her adventure with losing her, what is it you call it, your Bracha house, your blessing house, and moving into your new home in Pardes Chana with your lift arriving. Now, that's really, really a Bracha. Um, also, since it's right before Pesach, do you even have to clean if it's such a, a new house? No, we just need to put all of our food, that any food or hummus that we have, just in one section and, you know, make sure right, everything else right. is, uh, there's nothing to clean. <laughs> well, that's the bracha. You know, that is awesome. Um, I, I was complaining before about how my hands are all wrinkly and our house smells like oven cleaner. And you don't have to worry about that. Um, no. That's, my- <laughs> that's good timing. Really good timing. Perfect. Uh, my husband it is. my husband went shopping with a friend and they're buying all the food and we're prepping at their house because we also don't yet have any appliances. So that's another thing that's different about Israel and America. You rent a place and it comes appliance free. There's nothing there's no appliances. You have to buy your own appliances and then if you move, you take them with you. Uh huh. Now when you talk so, about appliances, you talk about like, a, like an oven and a refrigerator. Oven, refrigerator, microwave, washer, dryer, dishwasher, everything. That's right. That's right. It comes with, no- it comes with nothing. <laughs> so right. we have this lovely home, and we don't yet have a refrigerator, so we bought non-perishable foods and snacks, and the community here has been incredible. They have welcomed us in and the children. Uh, there's a, na- a new fr- new neighbor friend. When I say new, I mean a- the one friend that we know in Pardes Hana introduced us to one new friend, and that new friend said, hi, we live nearby. Send your kids over. I'm making ziti for you. Oh, you, guys nice. gonna, you, you guys are going to be unpacking. How about if the kids hang out at my house? Nice. And, and the kids hung out all day, and then she sent good. her big kids over today. They introduced themselves. Hi, how are oh, you? Good. We're neighbors. Good. Come, come good. hang out. Do you want to come to this event? Good. Been good. So, That's so good. welcoming. Good, good. Yeah, That's what people need to hear. Like, yeah, they even Go sent ahead. us a welcome basket with oh, nice. um, all sorts of things that you don't realize you need, like matches for the Shabbos candles, because you probably don't know, know where you packed your matches. Right, and, right. Right? And candles yeah. to go with it. And look yeah. for your hands, because, by the way, unpacking boxes is very drying. So. Look, <laughs> yeah, it's a know, lot of you work. You right. to find it. I can't imagine. You, you told me that you ordered a um, container, and you told me the dimensions, and you said it's the largest size. It's the, um, it was like four, yeah, 40 by 10 by 10, and they, they usually sticker each box that they pack or each item, and they listed 232 items, and then somehow when they arrived, they kept taking boxes off, and they're like, oh, another one, no number, no number. So there were... Mm-hmm. For sure, more than 232 boxes. Man, uh, and that bikes, is nuts. Bicycles and all sorts wow. of things. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. Um, it was, I was telling you earlier, we didn't do that, but you, you probably don't really need to worry now because you have everything to, to start your life here. That's nice. I mean, there was a really, I, there was a really big no. There was a really big debate: do we bring everything, or do we get rid of it and and buy new when we come to Israel? So we we kind of went back and forth. If you compare it financially, to be honest, it's very similar, maybe even more expensive to buy new because you already own everything you own and you can't really sell it for much. You know, used furniture is not really worth much, so. We talked about doing that, and then we said, wait a minute, Israel shut down. You might not even be able to get to the stores to buy things. Where are you going to live, and how are you going to move into a house? It wasn't a furnished house that we were planning to rent, so how are you going to have a place to live, and what are you going to do? And we Mm -hmm. said, you know what, just bring what you have, and anything you want to replace, or if you need to fill in, we could do that later. But it just once we were bringing stuff, it was like, just bring anything you want. Just throw it in there, and you'll you'll unpack your boxes, and you'll have your stuff ready to go. You, there won't be so much, you know, the shopping and the getting and the sh- Yeah, that's awful. It never ends. It never ends. I have been here I mean, with my family. <laughs> yeah. I've been, we've been here for 15 years, and there are things we just don't have. Um, and we had, you know, even if it had been from our parents, we had a couch. Right. A, and right. two couches. Here, we can't even find right. a decent couch, you know, for a decent price. It's, it's annoying. 
Um, but everyone makes their choice and their decision accordingly. And, you know, you came with a family and you, you know, we came with two little babies. So it was different. But um, right. good for you. And, I, and I'm sure it was a, a very big headache packing that stuff on the other side of the ocean. I, 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 very, very, um, very big. I don't envy you at all. But you did it. And you did it together. And it's good. You know, you'll all remember this forever, right? For sure. For, not something that you forget. And yeah. from the American side, I didn't realize this until we started looking for shipping companies. We called them and we said, okay, so we're going to pack the stuff. They said, no, we're going to pack your stuff. We said, what do you uh-huh. mean? They said, we're coming to your house and we're packing everything. Get rid of what you don't want because if it's in your house, we're packing it. So uh-huh. we didn't actually have to pack the physical box. But you had to go through your entire house and, you know, all those tchotchkes and the knickknacks and all those things you don't actually want or need that you have to get rid of. So you had to sort and get rid of everything you don't want. And then they pack the entire house other than that. And they come in for two days. They pack the house. They pack the truck. And they disappear with your stuff. Oh, my God. So that that was really difficult. And my husband was amazing in terms of organization. So we had red tape. And the whole house, wherever there was red tape, the men, men knew, don't touch it, leave it in America, because we, uh-huh. we just hadn't had a chance to get rid of it. We had some uh-huh. rooms that were entirely marked off, like, just forget it. This is not for you. We're going to deal with this after you leave. And then uh-huh. everything else they packed. And so far, we're unpacking things. And I think most of the things that are in there, we wanted. And every once in a while, I'm like, how did that get in here? That was in the no uh-huh. pile. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to come. And now your right. children, do they, do they help with this or did they just like, did you get them out of the way when you were doing that packing or that sorting? In America? Um, oh, yes, yes. In America, we, we, with their own stuff in their rooms, we said you can each take one stuffed animal, pick your favorite one. Okay. We're not bringing 75 stuffed animals or however many, you know, every family has over the years. And we said, what toys do you actually play with? And I think right. our biggest toy collection was Legos and we got rid of several bins of Legos and somehow I opened, I thought we brought one bin of Legos. My plan was one box of Legos and we're good. I don't know. I already opened and found two large boxes of Legos. (laughs) I don't know Um, how they got in there. Well, that's smart. That's smart. Because Legos are expensive here. Well, we're going to have a lot of Legos to share with our friends. That's all. Yes, yes. They will appreciate it. But you don't see that here. I haven't seen any Legos. Like, we never had them. Um, we brought children's we'll books. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. My, kid, my youngest is now 11. But when we came, we had books. All we brought were books and baby clothes. That's all. Yeah. We have yeah. three I, enormous bookshelves stuffed with books. And we have a friend that came it. over, and she's been unpacking for two days, just unpacking books. Yeah, and yeah. Now they're unpacking. unpacking. It's, it's a, look, it's a job. It's a job. But it's, it's great, you know. It's Pesach time. You're starting a new life. It's exciting. It's really amazing. And, and talk about the freedom that comes with Pesach and this, like from slavery to freedom, right? The, the yeah. heaviness and the weight of all of our things. And then you only bring what you want and you need to live. And everything else that, you know, accumulates over the years, we left behind. And there is a certain Look. weight that's lifted. Yeah. And uh, there's something to be said for people who, who do this debate. Do I bring or do we buy new? That also right. is... is um, freeing uh like i said we didn't bring a lift and and i'm 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 glad i i mean we have enough junk accumulating here i, I think sometimes you end up bringing things you really don't need and it's hard to make those right. decisions sometimes when you're Very having hard. a life you, you know you were there you were there 20 years i think married with a family that's yeah. that's a that's yeah. a long time of collecting stuff all you know pictures and your children's drawings uh, and a whole lifetime yeah. oh, of things right? that was hard that was one yeah. of the hardest things, looking at, yeah. at, every time I looked at something, I said, if I, this was even years before I made Aliyah, when we would collect stuff, and I looked at it, and I said, if I made Aliyah, would I bring this? And if my answer was mm-hmm. no, I used to chuck it or donate it. Mm-hmm. And, no, that's and that was kind, that was the thinking, Where and I kept saying, Israel homes are smaller, they don't have closets. Oh, by the way, yeah, surprise, no closets. <laughs> There's yeah, no closets, whatever. right. Right, no closets, whatever furniture you have. So I kept saying, where are we going to put this? Even photo albums. Okay, so put them on the shelf, but then loose yeah, photos put them on the in shelf. a little bin. Right, so yeah, where, where do I put it? There's no closet right. to hide anything in. There's nothing hidden here. Everything's exposed. Hidden. 
right? Right. right. So it was. It's funny. Adventure. It's funny to hear you say this because we're Israeli by some people's standards. My parents call us their Israeli family, even though we're not. But we've been here 15 years, and like I told you, we didn't come with any furniture or anything like that. And when people come into our home, when soldiers come and eat at our house Friday night, um, they stare. They stare at our walls because we're not Israeli. And we don't have what other Israelis have. And you're the same. You're going to see. You are going to see people staring at your walls because it's just different. You have a different style. You have a different flavor. The art that you hang up. and the, It's funny. You're going to see. I and mean, listen right. to you tell me these things. I'm laughing because I, I know, I know. And it's um, it's going to be a great life. You made a great decision. I'm, I, I can't wait to meet you. You're going to see your children grow and change right before your eyes. And they won't remember. They're happy already. Yeah, they're they won't so remember. The memories will fade. This. Yeah, they, they'll remember this, but they're not going to remember so much um, their life in the state. The of little America. ones. Yeah, the little ones, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I told them, I said, you, I think you're going to speak and read and write Hebrew better than you're going to remember English. Maybe right. maybe the 11-year-old has enough that he'll, he'll maintain it, but the 7- and the 9-year-old, probably not right. a, not enough to keep them going. They'll, right. they'll be more no. Israeli than they will be American. No, it's a big mitzvah. We're out of time. I want to wish you a happy Pesach, and I'm so happy you're here. You've really made the leap to freedom. Thank you. So happy to be yeah. here. Happy Pesach to you. So, bye-bye. Bye. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from League City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Doris from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 